Whiskey Jason here, whiskey from the viewpoint of an American in Germany tasting rare and exotic whiskeys. Today I'm in Scotland, today I'm at the distillery of Glengoyne, and today I have the Teapot Dram number 7. Batch number 7, 2019 release. Whiskey base number 143655, 59.9% ABV, and last year... This bottle cost 90 pounds. This year, this bottle cost 120 pounds. So, um, they did a 30% price increase, which pissed some people off, to be sure. Now, this is actually a distillery only. Now, was I in Scotland? No. I was in Scotland in March of 2019, and I saw some bottles of this left over, which I did not buy. I was there with Food Quig, hey, <laughs> and I recommended him not to buy the bottle because I had actually placed in his little care package of 24, 23 different samples, um, also a teapot dram, so he had the opportunity to do so, to try that without buying the whole bottle. Now, this was, as I said, 90 pounds, and what you can do over here, at least in Europe, is you can go online, you can buy this directly through their website, um, which I did here. I bought one bottle of this last year, and since it was so great, I bought two bottles of this this year, this year which I'm doing a bottle share with, and so I gave uh, like half this bottle away as Christmas presents last year, and I made a lot of YouTubers in the German-speaking world fairly happy, to be honest. So what they did this year is they took 10 casks. They were all first fill Ordoloso sherry casks made from European oak. Thank you. How often have I complained about not knowing what type of wood was used in my sherry casks? The wood is almost as important as the sherry. I need to know what type of sherry, Fino Ordoloso PX, um, Pedro Jimenez, I know what type of sherry. I would like to know if it's a first fill, second fill, third fill, fourth fill, first fill. And then I want to know what type of wood these casks were made out of because the European oak has a much more of a chocolatey, dark chocolate type of tannin moment. The Americans are much more vanilla, uh, more vanilla in there, and the, the European oak has much, much shorter growing periods in the summer, and therefore it's much denser, and it gives a totally different wet wood profile. And that's great to know. I also get to know that there's 3,993 bottles of this from the 10 casks they, that they married, that they batted together. And I know that the youngest cask was 8 years old. I know that the oldest cask was 14 years old, which makes this the oldest teapot dram um, bottling so far. Now, the history, the legend, the story goes that back in the days, 1899, William McGinchy actually he was, became the master distillery. He noticed that a lot of the guys that worked at the distillery were going into the warehouse and actually stealing the whiskey, um, bringing it home um, in a ginger bottle, and that was a good amount of whiskey disappearing every day. So he said, okay, I'm going to go head on. I'm going to actually confront the people, and I'm going to give them... And the story goes, three fingers of whiskey a day in the morning, at lunchtime, and in the evening. So there was like nine fingers of whiskey every single day. That's a lot of whiskey, all right? Now, the young guys, and there's actually a guy who actually works for the distillery still today. He was back in the 1960s, a young man. And um, he says, I couldn't drink it all. And so what we did was there was some, this old copper teapot in the cafeteria and we would go up and we'd actually pour it in there. And then the experienced, the old guys would come and say, hey, I have not enough. And they would actually pour their glasses once again full and they'd use that instead. And so it would be the teapot dram. And this was not new make. This was actually matured whiskey, great whiskey, six, eight 12, maybe even 14 year old whiskey that was actually given to the workers there. And the problem was solved, everyone was happy until health and safety regulations happened in the 70s and they were like, you can't come to work drunk. You can't drink at a distillery. No, that's not even, that wasn't legal anymore. And so they had to get rid of that policy. All right, so a lot of people are very, very angry with Glengoyne because they raised the price. This was 90 euro, 90 pounds, I'm sorry, this is now 120 pounds. I'm going to be so much honest. Um, everyone's raising their prices. Everyone's recognizing that there's a bourbon and I'm sorry, the whiskey boom going on, and the prices are going to continue to go up at least for the next year or two. I don't know if we've reached the Senate. Um, um, 
we haven't reached the top, I think is going to go up a little bit more. Take a look at 2022, 2023, going to plateau and then go down. By 2030, I think we're going to have an over capacity, and that's where it's going to be a little bit difficult here for our whiskey world. But hey, those are my predictions. Let's see what, what I'm a writer if I'm wrong here. So now, um, this has been very, very poorly um, stored. So I did the very baddest, the worst, the baddest, all the baddest. The worst thing possible is I actually left the heel of the bottle in here for like eight to 10 months. Um, I think the last time I actually touched this bottle was in March. This is the 2018 version. This is the batch number six with 59.3%. This is now the batch number seven with now 59.9%. Um, when you nose them, ah, this is this is like an old oak chest of my grandmother. This is so delicious. Over here, flat comparison. If I just had this all by itself and I didn't have this, I was like, oh, pretty good whiskey. This is like a B type of whiskey over here. Oh, wow, I'm getting a lot of nice notes and so on. But in comparison, this blows it out of the water. So I think the oxidation process that happened in this bottle has taken away from some of this. Um, Roy from Aquavite, once again, thank you very much. You hooked me on the teapot. You were the person who actually recommended um, this whiskey originally. That's the reason why I went online. And I remember paying 90 pounds to buy this bottle. I remember paying the 20 some pounds shipping. And it was like, oh, <laughs> I just remember it was so expensive. And this year I went online, I was like, oh, two, two. <laughs> <laughs> didn't even I didn't even realize that the price had gone up by 30, 30 some percent. I was like 120 pounds sounds about right bloom and that's the problem we have today. Um, this type of whiskey for this quality to pay $150 for this bottle is like all right yeah Springbank takes it, Glengoyne takes it, Bruchladich takes it. I mean hey that's the normal price at the moment and so this might actually have been underpriced Sorry to say that, all right? So I don't know if this is overpriced or not, but let's try this, all right? So on the nose, as I said, this is a fabulous, this just jumps out, grabs you, and brings you back to a place, a place of dark wood, a place of European oak, a place of dark chocolate with a sherry balm wrapped around it. This is just a magnificent whiskey. Ah. Uh. I'm, I'm getting like the cigar smoke of a wonderful old Churchill man. This is just an old library, an old leather seat. This is just, 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 just absolutely fantastic. Even the guys who um, complained of Whiskey Base, for example, if you go there, 143655, you will see maybe one or two reviews at the time of the filming with one guy. He really complained about the price increase but then he gave it 90.5 points another guy who was actually at the release party got a 94.5 from 100 points i mean these are just fantastic fantastic notes and grades for this mm. now the 59.9 percent are a little bit hot so what I'm going to do, I'm going to try to dilute it down to about 53%. I've had a little bit of whiskey here from this, and I know exactly the sweet spot. Um, that 59.9% is cast strength. Maybe I'm too weak, maybe it's too strong, but I just like mine a little bit lower. And then afterwards, this is just this wonderful, creamy, dark chocolate, sherry delight this is an excellent excellent whiskey as i said maybe the oldest or definitely the oldest um age of the um cask used so far for a teapot dram will it be always released in november of each year we'll see if they make it happen it might be in october it might be in a december um, but they want to do a release once a year of the teapot dram one of the brand ambassadors, I actually know him, he was in a video that was actually in the day of the re inaugural release of this as, at the distillery. He was talking and he said, everywhere I go around the world, it could be Asia, it could be North America, it could be Europe, they always go, 
Got any teapot? Got any teapot dram under the counter? Got any teapot? And this is the thing everyone wants to try. Rightfully so. Oh yeah. I sound like Ed from um, the Rock Gut Riri. Oh yeah. Mmm. Mmm. This is almost perfection for me. This is a solid A. Oh, almost going towards an A+. Plus. I mean, this is like... Oh, I just love that dark chocolatey moment with that cherry. There was a Russell Stover's um, chocolate-covered cherries. Um, and imagine there's a dark chocolate around them. And that sugary cherry delight. Mmm. Oh, this is just... This is just Oh, Roy, thank you very much. I am not angry about the price hike. Would I have preferred them to drop the price? Of course. But they're just following the trend of the industry. As I said, when I bought these, I didn't even notice that they were off much higher than the year before. Not because I forgot the price, but because I thought the price was in line with what I was used to paying for my Springbanks, for my Bruchladis, for my other bottles of this excellent quality whiskeys that are out there. And that's just what you have to do at the moment is to dig a little bit deeper in your pocket and you're going to get some very, very nice stuff. Now, um, if you're at the distillery and you have the choice between the teapot dram and the hand fill, I think the hand fill was going for 100 pounds and now this is then 120 pounds. I'm not sure. The hand fills can be very, very nice, but the teapot dram is even Maybe even better because of the mix of the 10 casks here. Depends what's actually out there for the hand fill. If it's a sherry, if it's your first fill, your Ololoso sherry cask with European oak, go for it. If it's a bourbon oak, go for the teapot. Um, so, unfortunately for many people in the States, they don't ship to all the states in the um, United States. So, you have to take a look and see if you can find a friend to get this, um, what was it, donkey or mule it over to you. Um, this is definitely worth it. This is fantastic. This is great, great stuff. All right, so Whiskey Jason here. I gave it a solid A. Value for money, I'm going to give it a C. Um, I don't think that it's overpriced. I don't think that it's out of this world. Should it be even higher? No. Um, should it drop the price next year down to 100 pounds? Or 100 pounds? Yes, of course, I'd be happy. But it would be contrary to the price pa poli politics of the whiskey community at the moment, unfortunately. That's the way things are. All right. Thank you very much for watching. Um, please like, subscribe, and tell others. My question of the day is what is your favorite distillery only? So if you go to a distillery only, for example, in Kentucky, you can go there and there's only things you can get there. For example, I had a single barrel that I put my thumb on and got that as a distillery only. When I was up in Ireland, I had a distillery only. Um, when I was over in Scotland, I had a distillery only. Go to the different distilleries, only things you can buy at the distillery. And also, um, if I've been in Germany and other distilleries all around the world, there's a distillery only. My question is, first of all, is that good? Should we reward the people who geographically can be close to the region and therefore punish people who are not? Kind of split on that decision. And second of all, what are your favorite distillery only? For example, a friend of mine was recently up in Glendronach and brought back a hand fill. Oh, I think a 24-year-old hand fill from Glendronach, $400. Was it worth it? Well, yes. Um, that was so good, even better than this, I think. All right, so that's the question here. What are the hand fills? Are they really worth it? Are they something we should encourage? And I personally think yes, and I think there are a couple of distilleries where it's absolutely worth almost every single penny they want for it. Thank you very much for watching. Tell others, Whiskey Jason here. Bye-bye.